Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Now, it's been a crazy busy week this week, just like always, and I've got a lot to share with you. We're going to be working on the cutter grinder hub that we started on last week, and I've got a lot of other random stuff for you too, so let's go up to the shop and get started. Alright guys, now this video is going to kind of be a continuation of last week's video. We're going to try to finish up our hub that we've been making that uh, holds our grinding wheels to our cutter grinder. And there's still several steps before we're done. I need to cut my slots for my keyed washer onto the hub itself. And I need to finish up or make the washer and or the nut. And I wanted to make a practice piece before I actually started cutting on my good material because it's all I have and I didn't have any large round stock to practice on. So I've decided I'll show an alternative method to getting thick washers or nuts like this using the lathe and making them out of you know, plate steel. We're going to be trepanning this nut out and it's a pretty neat method. It's actually really useful if you don't own a milling machine. You can get every feature on this nut simply by using the lathe. So I've already got a piece of plate in the lathe. We're going to try to make this kind of quick and of course I got some other stuff in this video I'll show you too. So let's go over there and get started. I use quite a bit of layout fluid in my projects. And for me it's a good method. I usually, if I don't make a drawing, I'll often take and lay my work out. And, you know, just a method where I have to think about my measurements twice. I'm not thinking about them on the fly on the machine. I have an actual line to scribe to. And it just helps me avoid mistakes that I often make if I don't make a drawing or, or lay it out. Alright, so we've got our rough dimensions on here and we just scribed them in this blue. And now I want to come in and I want to relieve this center section of the ring. And I'm just going to scribe this here. This is going to be the OD basically of our hole here. And I'm going to use my 3 30 seconds radius tool. Same one I put the, our thread relief in last week in our hub. And I'm going to come in, plunge, and just move across just a small amount to give us that relief. And then we'll drill and bore, a hole, bore our hole and thread it. This will just make sure I have a radius in that corner.
Well, we got our hole drilled and bored to size. We've got our part laid out and I'm uh, ready to thread it. So I'm going to bring and show you this threading tool real quick. I ground it on the cutter grinder and I'll show you a quick shot of the trepanning tool. Alright, here is the tool or threading tool we're going to use. This is your standard, uh, you know, 90 degree uh, hand ground tool. And you got to grind a lot of clearance away. If you do it out of just a square, this is a 3 8 uh, piece of high speed steel, you got to grind away a lot of clearance. But if you do them at an angle, now I can't do as small holes with this one, but uh, this is not ground at 90. So all I do is camp my tool post a little bit, and uh, I'll show you on the lathe, and uh, we'll set it up and uh, tip this thread. Alright, so I got my tool post canned, you can see that. I'm going to just use my fishtail gauge to set up my 60 degree threading tool. And you can set it off these two points here. We've already faced this, so I know that it's, you know, flat, or not, this bore is 90 degrees to the face. So, come in, set up my fishtail gauge, just like that. A lot of people already know this, but you can use these points. Alright, same as before. 16 threads per inch. a little closer look at this trepanning tool. Now I ground this on the cutter grinder and I've ground them by hand. You can you can do it either way. And this is really no different other than a couple features than a standard parting blade. And one of those extra features is that it's short because it has to have clearance and it has an extra clearance angle on this side, extra steep anyway. And imagine this is our ring and we're going to be coming in and plunging into that plate and parting it off. Well, the inside, the piece that we're keeping, radius sweeps away from the tool. So this is turning, sweeping away from the tool, but imagine this on the inside it's sweeping towards the tool, so it has to have extra clearance on this uh, on the outside uh, edge, uh, just to allow it to cut without rubbing. And Tom Lipton does a really good uh, video on these trepanning tools, and uh, you know I learned a lot from his video. So if you're interested um, and want more detail, you could go visit Tom Lipton. But that's the idea. I mean, it should work. I think I'm going to power feed this 
just like you would power part a piece off. I'm going to do the same in the lathe. I'm going to try it anyway. And the worst that can happen is we break a tool or, you know, damage a part we're not going to use anyway. So let's go try it. Alright, so I just made sure my tool was square with my work. Just a square off the face. You know, nothing, nothing that special. Come in and set my depth. And I'm just going to power feed this guy in. Hopefully it works. It should. And our, as long as our tool geometry is correct. I'm just going to be adding a little oil by hand. Here's our part, and it turned out really good. Um, sometimes you just gotta pull the power feed lever and let her let her eat. Um, usually it'll work out if everything's pretty close to correct. Now I should have thought a little farther forward and ground that tool, my uh, trepanning tool, to where it would have left the burr on this other piece. That would have been as simple as changing the end uh, angle just slightly. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. This should break right off, and uh, I'm pretty happy with that. The only thing, you know, this mild steel is that the, the finish is not that great. But, you know, don't really care. I'm going to clean this up and uh, relieve it a little bit. Just hand work it, and we'll come in and put our, uh, our uh, pin holes in it and call it good. Here's a tool I definitely don't regret building. Just a quick little build. I did it in less than a day. Just a eight inch disc that I stick sticky sandpaper to and uh, I use it all the time. Here I'm just deburring the part a little farther, getting it a, uh, giving it a better finish with the gray scotch bright wheel. You know, these were a gift from a viewer and uh, when I wear these out, I'll be buying some more because they take all the work out of uh, getting a good finish on a part. Here's a little better shot of the falls that I show often behind my shop. It's pretty dry right now. It changes from day to day. I mean, this is just a wet weather stream. So it runs heavy when it rains, but it dries up quick. So let me get you turned around and show you the shop. Shop up there. And look out that back door, the one that you're always seeing. That's when I look out and uh, can see this stream. So this runs down past my house. Man, it's amazing what a wheat can do when the conditions are right. This garden has really changed a lot. Let me uh, bring you in and show you what we got. It's actually starting to rain. Right now, look at those ears. I mean, you know, in a week's time, a little over a week actually, we've got uh, uh, good corn and probably a week from now we'll be picking this. Let's go down to the lower garden and look at it. Alright, so this corn here is about three weeks behind the corn up on the hill. It was just a muddy mess. We couldn't plant this till later, so it's a little farther behind, but it's looking pretty good. we got uh, some, you know, it's tossling, so that's pretty good. There's our onions. Of course, corn, tomatoes, sweet potatoes, and peppers. And it's starting to rain. So. 
I wrap this up. Here's something a lot of you guys probably don't know, and that's I heat my house strictly with wood and have for the last few years. And, uh, you know, I like to split these big pieces up so they're easier to handle, uh, you know, before I uh, put them on the wood splitter. I don't own a wood splitter, and uh, I was just out here messing around. It was a cool morning, and my wife was looking out the window talking to my mother on the phone. So, 15 minutes later, Dad arrives with the wood splitter. Uh, I'm almost 40 years old and it's still Dad to the rescue. This uh, summer's quickly getting away from me and it'll be winter time before you know it. So I gotta get this big pile of wood split up and stacked under cover. Um, <laughs> you can easily uh, not think about heating your house when it's 85 or 90 degrees outside, but. Uh, you know, in order to be prepared, we, we're doing it now. We've got the wife and kids out here, and we're just all pitching in and trying to make short work of this. We don't necessarily enjoy it, but it's something we have to do. All right, so now all we need to do is drill our two holes. These need to be pretty accurate because otherwise a spanner wrench won't fit them unless you use an adjustable. But... Uh, all my hubs are the same. They're inch and three-quarter spacing between the holes, so I want the this one to be inch and three-quarter. So we're going to drill them, we're going to uh, deburr them, and then I got some other stuff I want to show you too. Alright, so we've got all quarter-inch shank tooling, so we're just using a quarter-inch collet. Just skip the drill chuck all together. We're going to first center drill, drill, and then come in and deburr the hole with our uh, countersink. So I'm moving on to my keyed washer slots in my hub. And I was unable to center on the hub due to the thread, so I've got a test bar chucked up in my rotary table here. And I'm just using that to get it centered with the spindle. Well, while I was out here, I just decided to go ahead and set my rotary table up to up uh, vertical and hit these two keyway slots while I was, you know, while well, I was on the mill, I might as well get this hub completely finished. And uh, that's the good thing about a rotary table. If you buy one, definitely get the horizontal vertical, in my opinion. Uh, they're far more versatile than just a horizontal. It allows you to do multiple setups. I just need to get a three jaw, or a, a scroll three jaw on this thing instead of a manual four jaw because it takes so long to get set up. So I'm going to bring in, we're going to cut these two slots, and we'll call this hub complete.
Well, these slots really turned out nice. I'd have to say this 1144 is a pleasure to cut. It uh, really does uh, does machine well. And I did raise a big burr along these threads, of course, running that end mill across them. And all I did was come in and take my thread file and clean them right up. I mean, these things are awesome, and they're cheap. And uh, then I just took a stone inside the groove to clean up the, the remainder of the burr. And, uh, you know, you can't beat that. It, uh, it really has turned out extremely nice. And uh, there's that nut. I got it cleaned up. And, uh, I mean, for a practice piece, it looks pretty good. You know, I'm starting to wonder if I should just go ahead and use that. There ain't nothing wrong with it. It being mild steel, I just have to be careful with it. But, that, uh, pretty good. Let me, uh, show you guys some, uh, some viewer mail that I got this week. All right, got a email the other day. Thomas Mitchell said, uh, I got some stuff I'd like to send you that I don't use. And I believe he said some of this stuff was his grandfather's. And from the looks of this stuff... Some of it has got some real age to it. You can tell by the lettering and stuff on some of these taps that, you know, <laughs> they're from time past. But the majority of them are in pretty good shape. Some that are strange and I've never seen before. Some that I've definitely never used, like a 3 8 20. You know, never tapped a 3 8 20 hole in my life. Uh, some things he did not know what they were. He said he would send them anyway. And he wanted me to tell him what I thought they were. And... I believe this is a tire tread wear gauge. That's what I think that is. Um, you know, he didn't know, and uh, and I think that's what that is. I'm not exactly for sure myself. A uh, couple pieces of brass here with uh, some squares uh, machined out of them. I don't know exactly what they were used for, but I would assume the, these were some sort of work holding fixture. You know, you could even use them to hold taps with a set of pliers if you didn't own a tap wrench. So. Shop made item, I'm sure. Sent me this Starrett plate measuring gauge here. Now, I owned already the music wire gauge, but I did not have the plate gauge, so that was a good addition to the shop. That's a number 283, and the wire one is a uh, number 295. Sent me a piece of Momax uh, parting blade and a really nice central tools metric micrometer. I did not own any metric uh, measuring equipment, so this is the first set in the shop, and it looks to be like it, you know, had never been used. Uh, still got the paperwork, so that was a great addition. Sent me some reamers, some adjustable from half inch down to a quarter, and these were still on the sleeves, so they look a little rough, but they're still extremely sharp. So those would be neat. I, uh, I'll use those just to just to try them out of. Don't have much experience with adjustable reamers. Uh, the paperwork's in the sleeve that tells you how to sharpen them, so I thought that was neat. And, uh, you know, just several neat items, and I really appreciate it. I'm going to clean this stuff up and put it in the toolbox and give it a second life. Um, this was really cool. A number four tapered pin reamer with a number four tapered pin. Uh, I did not have that, so... Thank you. I really appreciate it, and I can't wait to use some of this stuff. It'll definitely come in handy. All right. Now, the second item, I believe it was sent by Doyle Smith, I think was the name, but I'm not for sure. Now, these are diamond dressers for dressing grinding wheels, um, and I'm never, I don't have any uh, experience with this type, but they look like they're just roughing dressers. And then several single point dressers, which, uh, you know, is really nice because I was getting kind of worried. Now, uh, the diamond dressers that I had originally, I've already damaged two um, for sure and probably others unknowingly. So these come at a really good time. Um, some of these are, you know, really sharp pointed and some of them are, you know, more, more rough. But uh, be, these will be good for roughing out a wheel, you know, removing the probably the majority of material. I've still got several that I owned previously that are really sharp, small diamonds, and I didn't want to use those for rough work. So uh, these come at a great time. So thanks. I really appreciate it, and uh, <laughs> I'm glad they showed up when they did. Well, guys, I think that's it for this week. I think that they turned out, or this one turned out really well. Hopefully the others that I make will turn out as well as this. And uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and use that nut. I don't see why I can't. You know, it's mild steel, but if you're any bit careful with it, it'll last just fine. You just have to, you know, 
not take it on and off as much as you would if it was made out of better stuff. So you can do it. All it takes is a little practice and uh, you know I always do practice pieces on almost everything that I make. Um, there's you know this is not a production shop so I have the ability to do that and that's what I do and that's why I get usually decent stuff is because that's not the first time I've made it. I've already hashed out all my problems to begin with. So thanks to all my viewers, new and old, all my subscribers and my patrons. I really appreciate you guys. Make sure to comment if you have any suggestions. And I'll see you next time.